when God gave the nations, the church, he gave that nation the answer to their problems. Because God's kingdom is not just a spiritual place. What you don't know is that God's kingdom is a country. There's power in knowledge. There's power in information. There's power in knowing something. If you know what has been written concerning health, it is easy to claim healing. If you know what has been written concerning finance, it is easy to claim wealth. If you know what has been written concerning business, you, there are words in the scriptures that have you run to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. A ticket is made up of 10 good years. 10 good years has come and gone. 2019 is a curtain that is closing up on that. And a new curtain is about to open. The people who are launched in to what God wants to do are people who are sensitive in the spirit. Not people who are looking with the optical eyes. But people who are looking and seeing with the eyes of the spirit. Those are the ones who are qualified for the mega things that God wants to do in the coming year. That's why we must be led by the spirit. Of all things we give attention to this season. We must give attention to a spirit led life. As many who wants to live life in the flesh, they would reap death in the flesh. To be carnally minded, the Bible says, is to be dead. But to be spiritually minded is to be alive to God. Is to be alive to God. It will shock me if I speak to some of you. I would not hear anything God has said to you concerning 2020. It's going to be a big shock. There's one thing I ask you now. What is God or what has God said to you specifically for your next year? For the next 10 years? For the next decade? It will be shocking. None of you can say categorically, see what God has said. How many of you want an encounter this evening? And that's why you're here. And that's why you're here. Can you pray and ask the Lord, Father, I suspend carnality and I suspend the flesh. I suspend being sensual. I suspend being rude and being wronged by the flesh. I suspend it. Hello, listen to me. I heard a story of somebody that got me thinking. They said that the guy prayed and prayed and the Holy Ghost led him to a particular interview. When they walked in, they were interviewed. It was an annoying company. They were, they were interviewed other people. When he walked into the interview hall, lo and behold, the people who were interviewing him told him, "The moment you walked in here, we saw that you're the right man for the work. You are hired without an interview." They told him, "You are hired immediately." Listen to me. If you go before the cloud, you would be frustrated. There's a cloud that leads people. When Jesus was born, the Bible said that stars appeared in the sky. And that star led the wise men to the very spot where the Messiah was sitting. Even King Herod, with every information, every military arsenal, every whatever you think he had, couldn't trace where the boy was. It was a star that led some group of people to the exact spot. Your prayer this evening should be God. May this star appear that will lead me to the specific place of my blessing, the specific place of my inheritance, the specific place of my manifestation, the specific place of my dominion in God. How can you be a defeated Christian? No star, no cloud. No star, no cloud. No star, no cloud. Hello, you're going to pray, but hold on. Hear this one. One of God's servants, I reflect. And hey, if you are sitting in front of me and you're not doing what I'm asking you to do, you better disappear because I may just jam you something now. A servant of God, I reverse so much. Bishop David Oedipo was speaking this after I was watching him on YouTube. He gave about seven to nine prophetic things that has happened in the ministry. 
from the era of inception to the point where they are now he was quoting dates specifically he said one time God said to them in the ministry and he said that was about 25 years ago that the time is going to come you're going to stand on one podium and you're going to preach and the whole world will hear you at once he said at the time God gave him that vision there was no internet and he didn't know what internet was he said there was no YouTube there was no video there was no internet and he didn't know what that was but he had God told him and he announced it to the church but it looked like foolishness because you see God is always current maybe you don't know he lives in the past he lives in the present and he lives in the future God is not only where you are he is where you want to be and there are things about where you want to be you don't know until you hear God because he's there you are not there you live in time you don't live in the future the moment you exit your past you live in time God is the only one who can be both in the past in the present and in the future at the same time at the same time you only have capacity to be here there are things that have not yet been invented God knows about new jobs that have not yet been created God knows about and maybe in your destiny and in your future you are the one to fill that office space how would you know where God is taking you to if all you do is live in the flesh God does not speak to people in the flesh he speaks in the spirit don't forget that before Jesus was born he was prophesied about years ago Isaiah talked about him from Isaiah down to the book of Matthew was over 600 years after something that was spoken concerning Jesus in the book of Isaiah took over 600 years before it came to pass if they didn't hear it there are things in your 20 years that God wants to say to you now you are distracted with the flesh that is why Christians jump in and jump out jump in and jump out they cannot follow God specifically or said they were only a church of barely 500 people he said when they did a particular conference that sat 500 people they told everybody that the whole world came he said that period where who are you to even gather 500 people he said when 500 people come to your meeting it means the whole world came he said but in one of those meetings where they were sitting 500 he told the church that this church will sit 50,000 people carnally minded people could not understand it but the man understood it because he was hearing things beyond the flesh he had it in the spirit the reason you give up on life is because you have not heard anything so the only thing you see is what life presents you have not been able to picture the things that the holy ghost presents i get so scared at the generation that is sleeping I get so scared at Christians who are carnal. A whole new year is about to come forth, and people don't know what God's program is. People cannot see the handwriting clearly written on the wall. Rehad Bonky just passed on last Saturday, and people don't even know the significance of his passing on. I wrote the post and posted viral on the internet. And I said, Look, all the generals of faith to celebrate today are in their 70s a curtain is about to be closed up and a curtain is, is closing up so fast and a new curtain is about to open i found out something in the bible when god wants to enlist and recruit an army go and read the old testament and see it's time god spoke to the leaders spoke to moses about recruiting army into the recruiting soldiers into the army of israel he gave specification about the age he said from 20 years and above recruit into the army i was asking god god why now why would rehan leave he said many more are about to be taken he said because the coming year 2020 is a prophetic year he said we are looking for the 20 army he said there's going to be an emergence of new wine new crop of individuals 
that would launch into God's program, that will launch into destiny with God. But they must be consecrated and committed to the process. You can't be a carnal Christian if the only place you get information is in your ear. Sorry, how deaf are you? Too deaf. The only news you know is the news on the media and social media. Sorry, how limited are you? There's information beyond that. Information in the cosmos realm. Information in the spiritual realm. Information the Holy Ghost is downloading day in, day out. People cannot wait upon the Lord because they have not heard anything. What did Habakkuk say? Chapter 2, verse 2. He said, I will stand on my guard. And I will watch, keep my watch. And I would wait to see what he will say to me when I'm reproved. And he says, Son of man, write the vision, make it plain. So that he that read it may run. He said, For the vision is for an appointed time. He said, Though it tarries, wait for it. You can't wait on something you've not heard. You can't even pursue something you've not seen. That's why people are distracted. Especially young people. Distracted. Because you heard nothing, you've heard nothing. If you hear the governor is coming to your house, you would wait for him. Why? Because you heard. If you didn't hear anything, you can't wait for something you didn't hear. I pity young people today. The carnality is becoming too intense. I love what somebody was saying. He said, Christianity does not need stimulation. Christians should not be waiting for stimulation. When you have the Holy Ghost, it's your stimulant. Your stimulant. Dry Christian, always waiting for revival, waiting for a move, waiting for a touch, waiting for instigation, and stimulation. You can't go nowhere like that. Honorable said that two years he was in Canaan land, he didn't travel anywhere. Two years. All he was doing for two years was waiting on the voice of God, hearing voices. He said they built three universities without stress and they built it on reserve. That's why the world criticizes what they don't know. That's why the world gossips what they don't understand. Because they don't know the process that led to it. You know what carnality has made you believe? You are investing in things of the flesh. Think it as the main thing. Money, clothes, car. You think that is what makes a Christian successful? Sorry, sir. The Bible said, if you are not faithful with your unrighteous mammon, he calls money unrighteous. That thing that is making you have no time for God. He calls it unrighteous. He says, you are not faithful with the unrighteous power. Who is going to give unto you the true riches? That's what the scripture calls true riches. It is not tangible. It is intangible. I see how Christians pursue what God calls unrighteous at the expense of what God calls true riches. And I cry, how will their eyes be this blind? Where will it open? If you know how a spirit operates, that's how it should operate. Maybe you've watched Hollywood and you see how the spirit operates. That's how you should operate. You think you're a human being. The reason God gave you a body is so you can harness the habitat of the earth. It's so you can live within earth. The body is not the main thing. The reason for a building is to accommodate a people. Remove people from a building, the building decay. So if you think your body is the main thing, sorry sir, is the spirit. Have you mastered how to hear God? People who will not learn that process, I tell you, no matter what we prophesy over your life, 2020 will not be different from 2019. 
the whole decade may be a total repetition of the last 10 years of your life. What is wrong with the church of the end time? Men who do not understand spiritual leading. People who cannot see. The Bible says, buy eyesight and anoint your eyes that you may be able to see. He said, come and buy from me gold refined in oil, refined with fire, that you may be rich. Where did your knowledge of scriptures and spiritual things go to? The last time your life made advancement was the last time you stopped hearing God. It was the last time you heard God. The last time. That your staticness is not the absence of a talent or a skill. It's the absence of an ear that hears the voice of God. Spiritual decoders downloading and decimating spiritual information for people's upliftment and advancement yet they cannot hear what God is broadcasting antennas are turned off that's why you have dwelt in a dry land for so long and you think God is one keeping you no, your bad season only ends when you begin to reason with God that's why I say come now let us do what reason together and you don't do this kind of reasoning in your head it's a reasoning that takes place in the spirit there must be an intercourse of the spirit man and the spirit god for a death to take place in destiny destinies are not giving birth through physical intercourse you give birth to great destinies by spiritual intercourse Prayer, worship, and study of the word is not something we should do by virtue of suggestion. It's something we should practice by virtue of how we should live. It's something we should do because that is the requirement, our necessary condition for living. How long will it take you to master the things of the Spirit? To master, to be a master of the things of the Spirit must have struggled because of the absence of a voice over our life with absent our talent oh what about the woman who said to the husband i perceive this is a man of god he said i perceive listen to me you cannot receive until you perceive it is not what you conceive that gives birth to something you receive it's what you perceive Conception happens in the mind. Perception happens in your spirit. You can be conceiving ideas and not being able to give birth to any result until there is a perception in your spirit, a knowing in your spirit, man. There are dimensions you will not cruise into. I didn't come here to preach this evening. I came here to give you prophetic guideline 2020 is coming how is your work with god how is your commitment to jesus how is your commitment to fellowship how is your commitment to the holy ghost if things will be different listen to me and listen to me very well most of you have blown opportunities if god were able to show you the opportunities you've blown in your life you would weep and ask him for a second chance Many of you do not know things you have lost due to blindness, things that you couldn't handle due to would you graduate into 2020 the same way you lived in 2019? 2020 is not just a new year, it's the beginning of a new decade. You have to pay a different price from the prices you have paid the past years of your life to give birth to something unique, to give birth to something new, to give birth to something original, to something unspeakable. This life does not belong to the hanky pankies. People who want to follow God temporarily see the worst of life blowing in their face. But people who commit steadily to the process of following Jesus 
had born, he gave his life to Jesus at the age of nine and followed him from nine years to the age of 79 burning for Jesus no wonder his life was a testimony there's nothing as beautiful as living your life according to the script, specific script written concerning you any life outside God's divine scripting is a life that is miserable thank you Jesus if you need somebody to urge you to pray this season you are only wasting your time if you need somebody to follow you up this season you are only playing with your destiny you need somebody to check up on you to know how your faith is doing you are only wasting your time it's a time to follow God for yourself it's a time to commit to him for yourself it's a time to embrace him for yourself economy is shaking or not shaking it's not a business if you hear God nothing shakes you if you've heard God specifically about your life nothing moves you you'll be busy about the things he has said concerning your life thank you Jesus the scarcity of the power of God in this age is just a result of the scarcity of usable men God still remains all powerful God still remains all almighty there's no limit to him the limit placed on God is a limit placed on you it's a limit you've placed on your spiritual development your spiritual building it has placed a limit on the move of God in your life thank you Jesus everywhere you are lift up your hands right now we bless your day there's going to be a fresh touch from heaven spirit move to follow you it is destiny to follow you it is destiny to serve you it is destiny to commit to you I'm not following you for the fame I'm following you because I want my life to burn for you in a tried in a decade in a world of vices I want my light to be the one that shines that fresh touch is coming on you right now that fresh touch is coming on you right now the pretense have got to stop 
the hanky panky life has got to stop the in and out life has got to be over the today on fire tomorrow cold that life has got to expire until you get to that point where you are pressing on and all you do is to move forward and press on you are not like those that put their hands to the plow and take it away no we are not those that draw back to perdition we are not like those that draw back to the world once we put our hands on the plow we are committed we are committed to going through ah, even if they put a sword on my throat we are committed james said what shall separate us because there is a marriage and intercourse and interconnectivity between humanity and divinity between mortality and immortality because there is an interconnectivity between me and the holy ghost what shall separate us what shall separate us shall hunger shall tribulation shall job shall wife shall husband nay says in all these things we are modern conquerors through Christ that loved us Romans through Christ that loves us desire to know God better for yourself some of you know that your hairstyle is a cover up of a pain that is going on an unsatisfaction in your spirit some of you know that your clothes is just a is just a facade is a cover up of the bitterness you feel in your heart and when you are in your house you feel so empty some of you can feel it you know emptiness inside your soul emptiness inside your spirit no wonder the church instead of giving the real substance is giving substitutes we are giving comedy and entertainment as a way out of people's troubles who told you that that is the solution a man who finds God finds solution let me let you know something dear Christians a life of effort without the Holy Spirit is a life of frustration no matter how you work for God until you learn how to work with God until you learn how to work with God people are working for God and getting frustrated that's why they are jumping out of the boat because they have no mastered the technology of working with God when you work for God you do service to the kingdom when you work with God you partner with the Holy Ghost you partner with God those who work with God are those who hear his voice are those who see what he's showing those are the ones we're talking about it is stupidity to take off in your lane thinking you're pleasing God by your works without knowing the specific instructions he's giving you concerning what you're doing that's why frustration has never ended how can you work for God without a relationship with him working with God is about relating with him it's about communing with him it's about fellowshipping with him it's about studying the word it's about communion in prayer it's about devotion it's about a spirit-led life spirit-led life it's about a spirit-led life i heard your natural bass studying music in school in uyo the same uyo music didn't make him prominent partnership with the holy ghost did my kids there are many music scholars who are not scoring any goal 
many. The difference is partnership with the Holy Spirit. Partnership. Rugged partnership. That's why his songs are from heaven. A man with skills and a man with part that works with God, no limit for him. Knowledge minus fellowship with the Holy Spirit equals frustration, struggle. Skillfully poor. Skillfully irrelevant. Many Christians are like that today. The difference between a man who knows how to speak correct English but without result and a man who cannot even construct a simple t- sentence but has much result is the G factor. Is grace. Grace is the overflow of a consistent work with God. You know what I'm talking about? Grace is not automatic. Hello? It is the overflow of a consistent, committed, integrated, unseparated walk with God. That's the secret of grace. People you don't even know, you didn't beg, will come from here and there and ask you to come and collaborate with them. It is called the G factor. It breaks my heart to see these things go on in people's lives and they don't understand why. 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 why. Your prayer this night before we leave is God, help me know who you are help me know then give me a different understanding from the one i used to have a new understanding of you what is your new program what do you want to do listen to me this is a season of harvests for the church we are winding up any time from now we would witness the appearing of jesus the second coming of christ is at hand whatever you think you know how to do if it is not in the line of the service if it's not in the line of service to the kingdom if it's not in the line of service to god if it's not in line with partnership with the holy spirit in reaping this last harvest before the coming of jesus then it is going to be effort in futility I watched the Lima Award Night of Christ Embassy when they presented awards. And I'm using this to those of you in the music team. Presented awards to some guys. There's a guy that is breaking the internet now. He's called Testimony. When he came out to minister, the whole church was set on fire. Others came to minister and they clapped. When this one came to minister, people cried. What was the difference? The same mic where others are shouting and clapping. The same mic, the same people crying. I think he won a award to the tune of a hundred thousand dollars that night. When he came out to collect the award, with the trunk of people that that dances with him and sings with him, Pastor Chris asked them. He asked him. He said, "Who are these people?" He said, "They are his team." He said, "I heard that you go from street to street singing to win souls for Jesus." He said, "Yes, that that is his own ministry. That he uses his talent and his skills from street to street." street to street he calls it jesus on the street or gospel to the street doing concerts intentionally to win souls and he said most of the people in his group dancing with him were one from the streets and god is obligated to take him places listen to me correct your motive following god you cannot cheat god sir if your motive for following God is wrong, he knows. If your motive for serving him is right, he knows. Correct your motive. Once your motive gets right, God is ready to release. Release anything, everything in your direction. Correct your motive. Don't follow God for ulterior or for selfish motives. 
follow him because you love him follow him because you want to serve him follow him because you want to render services to him follow him because it is a passion it is your passion to serve and love him remove self-centered motives remove that from your way don't follow God because you want to be prosperous following God alone makes you prosperous can't follow God and not end up prosperous don't follow God because you want to marry don't follow God because he promised you silver and gold don't follow him for ulterior motive follow him because you love him I watched the movie coming to America a prince became a servant a slave boy why he was looking for a girl who would love him for who he is not for what he is that's what God is looking for people who would love him for who he is and not what he gives as for whether God will give he will do what give but he's looking for people who will love him for who he is and not what he gives once Christianity comes to that point nothing that shakes people will shake you money will no longer shake you clothes will no longer shake you I don't have, I have, I don't have, I have that will no longer move you Amen, Amen (laughs) Amen, Amen Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Make that your yes song to Jesus. Sing it again. Amen. Sing, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing it again. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Oh, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Raise your hands. God's power is here right now. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. Hey, hallelujah. Sing it again. Pare lo sha, pare lo ro bo sha de ya. I love you, Lord. I see God reviving people here right now. I love you, Lord. The touch of Jesus must be on fire once more. I love you, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is rekindling back your passion. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus, God. I love you, Lord.
for having God empty himself on you is total abandonment <laughs> self denial and self crucifixion total surrender total abandonment to his purpose to his will to his plan to everything to his calling to his mandate to the commission he has sent you to carry out the condition for having God release himself on you is total abandonment somebody said Rehad Bonki did not pity himself he did not spare himself he preached the gospel without pitying himself today our looks are more important to us than how much God is the for souls today our businesses our itineraries our programs and projects our different ambitions and personal goals have taken much more of the space God wants to take in our life no wonder we are limited because we called ourselves anyone who calls himself we sponsor himself but if God calls you he calls you to make you if God calls you he calls you to use you and make you useful some of you need to step up you have slept for so long where will you end your ushering career you are not called to be an usher you are called to make disciples of nations where will you stop deceiving yourself that your job is to be a choir member you are called to be a maker of disciples of nations it's time to step up it's time to step up it's time to step up total surrendering total abandonment hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Awake, all you sleepers. Put on your garments. Put on thy strength. Are you weak? Is because you have lived in the flesh. There's a word for you right now. God is saying to tell you, Awake, O ye that sleep. Put on thy strength. Awake, O ye that sleep. You are only weak because you have lost the vision of God. You have lost the vision of God. The vision of God makes strength available. Once you catch the vision of God, it energizes. It makes strength available. It makes strength available. It makes power available. It makes wisdom available. It makes money even available. The vision of God is a secret to activating His provision. Embracing the vision of God is a secret for attracting his provision awake O oh ye that sleep it 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 it's time to catch back vision for souls it's time to catch back vision for lost for the lost 
it's time to catch back visions catch back the body and the passion for the word of god catch back the passion and the body for the things of the spirit catch back the body and the passion for a consecrated life catch back the body and the passion for a soul winning life catch back the body and the passion for a giving life a sacrificially centered life a sacrificially giving life it's time to catch that body once again where you give all of all that you are and all that you have for the propagation of the kingdom of God thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus the mark of a spirit led life is not the shivering and the shaking is in the obedience in your obedience to the instructions that comes from the throne room is in your obedience to the things God is saying part time spirit led lives are not known by how much they shake and shiver no 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 spirit led life I only know by how much they obey divine instructions from God little wonder the Bible says as many who are led by the spirit of God they are the source so what does the spirit do he leads you he leads you to lead means to instruct you to lead means to command you to lead means to admonish you to instruct you as many who are led what it means as many who allow themselves to be instructed as many who carry out the leadings and the instructions the commandments and the commissions of the holy spirit they are the sons of god have god told you things by his spirit and you are still wrestling with what god has said have god instructed you about things you should surrender surrender that thing taking time from god surrender that thing making you a liability surrender that thing that makes you don't have time for the study of the bible morning till night you're busy chasing money no time to read the scripture morning till night you're busy chasing frivolities no time to give away yourself to prayers morning till night busy chasing things that have no value vanities and no time to run after souls that are perishing souls that are dying and going to hell by their numbers and God is saying to you a spirit led life is not known by how much he shakes or by how many times he shouts at revelations a spirit led life is evidently known by the instructions it carries out by the instructions one of the instructions of jesus the last instruction he gave was go ye now therefore into all the world and make disciples of nations you know people who are led by the spirits but how much they are committed to the voice of god go ye therefore and make disciples are you doing your own bidding or are you doing his bidding the great commission is not the great suggestion it is the great commission it is a commandment it has to be obeyed you don't have to negotiate it you don't tell god when to do it god tells you when to do it and when to do it is now when to do it is always when to do it is forever that is why you are saved you are saved to save you are saved to win souls you are saved to preach the gospel that thing standing in your way perhaps is why you have not been able to graduate into great heights of moves into great heights of exploits into great heights of exponential increase into great heights of manifestation of god's glory and power into great heights of manifestation of god's abilities maybe that is why because you have refused to step into the fullness of his calling there's glory for men who will say yes lord here i am 
send me do you want me in the night time do you want me in the noon time do you want me in the morning time here i am send me i'm available oh and i praise you lord you you are my strength and my reward i'm lost without you your love pulls me through my life my life Just two more times. And I praise you. And I pray. Praise you. Sing it like you know it. You are my strength and my reward. You are my strength and my reward. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. your sincere prayer tonight enough of the sitting down enough of the selfishness enough of the centered self-centered living it's time to let go so you can let God it's time to let go so you can let God thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you spirit of the most high Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Divine. Thank you, Ancient of Days. We sacrifice our self. We sacrifice our selfishness. We sacrifice our motives. We sacrifice our ambitions. We sacrifice our greed. We sacrifice our pretense. We sacrifice our self-centered lives. We take up your walk in all fullness of strength. We awake from our sleep and we wear our strength. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I hear the Holy Ghost telling me, many of you have come to the altar a billion and one times to offer your life. The moment you offer and go back, you take it up again. And the Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you, get serious with God. How long will you offer it and offer it and offer it and offer it? Brother Bonky gave his life to Jesus at the age of nine. And since that day, until the day he breathed his last he had been burning for jesus i gave my life to jesus quite early enough also as a young boy since that day till now when i took up this microphone to preach this gospel i have never stopped preaching i keep preaching i keep doing it i keep going for missions going for evangelism wherever he needs me i go my life has not dried the body is still fresh the passion is still hot the fire is still burning my flames are still red hot and jesus is saying i should tell somebody here make that commitment to give it all and give it at once give it all and give it over give it all and give it over give it all and give it all over don't give half don't give quarter give it all if he needs you now at the expense of anything give it all to him 
you, Jesus. Father, we bless our offerings tonight. Take up your offerings, take up your tithes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're my God. You're my King. You mean everything to me. You're my song and melody. I worship you today. You're my God. You're my King. You mean everything to me. You're my God. Amen. coming decade. Don't waste your life this coming decade. This is a season of harvest. It's a se- season of making impact in the lives of men. Don't waste your life. Don't waste your life pursuing vain things. Give this life for the gospel. Prophecies have been coming from all over the world. My pastor even told me one, Pastor David. He said this season, he said this coming decade is going to be one of the greatest decades in the history of humanity. He says, such a move of the Holy Spirit, such a move of the power of God, such a move of the glory of God. And he says, such a, an exponential and sporadic harvest of souls, like the world has never known, is going to be launched in this age. I dare you, don't be the one who will be left out. When the roll is caught up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll call is caught, when men are mentioned on that faithful day men who shook the world i want my name to be amongst that men who will be called that day we are not going to spare anything i told god i'm stepping into my real full evangelistic calling yes there's a dimension of me that is for church but there's a voice that needs to roll out in the nations that needs to roll out in the stadium and it's to row out on the campuses harvesting souls for Jesus we will spare nothing we will not spare our time we will not spare our money we will not spare our beauty we will not spare our comfort until we become part do you know that the reason the trumpet have not yet sounded is because God is waiting for the last set of people who will join the roll call he's waiting for the last generals He's waiting for the last generals. He's waiting for the men who will join the league of the bunkies. You are a privileged generation. You are privileged to be alive at this point in time. Privileged to be born. Privileged to be living in such a time in history as this. Don't waste it. And don't say you didn't hear about it. We believe you've been transformed by the wonders of God's word. For additional information about us, you can visit our website at www.princetonhills.org. You can also send us a mail at info at princetonhills.org or call 0806-499-5029, 0812-511-3214. Princeton Hills Ministries, Raising Global Raising Leaders. Global Leaders.